direction uh, these, this uh, series of hearings is going. Senator Paul's Risky Research Review Act is a giant leap for mankind. It might be the start of something that will save tens of millions of lives, and I commend him and we'll do everything we can to put wind beneath your cell to get this across the finish line. Um, my concern is there's not enough national security emphasis on, on, on this. It's stunning to me as I go back and talk to the, the folks that knew the, the most at the beginning of COVID were the national security people. They were not surprised at all. Uh, so Dr. Redfield, I wanna talk about the next pandemic and whether it's man-made or from nature, I don't care. Um, we all realize the flu vaccine works 25 or 50 percent of the time. Uh, the mRNA vaccines were going to be the cure-all that they're not. <clears throat> what do you think would be the, if you were going to line up a scenario for us to practice, what would be the, the virus? And talk a little bit about vaccines as opposed to therapeutics. Well, I think it's very probable that we will have another pandemic. I think it's very probable that the, the pandemic pathogen will be bird flu. Uh, the current bird flu, as you know, is now in over 100 million chicken and turkeys in the United States alone. It's global, it's an H5N1 virus. That virus now has gone into 27 mammal species in the United States, uh, including cats and mice and bears and surprisingly dolphins and seals. So it's quite extensive. It doesn't seem to have learned how to go mammal to mammal when it gets into those mammals. It, used, it seems to go bird to mammal. Okay. Uh, and you know it's been in five uh, humans in the United States since 2019. Um, and it has been in about 888 humans across the world since 2003, and, and it raises concern because of those 888 individuals, there have been about 52% mortality, so there's a high mortality rate. So I think it's very likely that this virus will continue to uh, go out and try to learn how to infect different mammals, including humans, and eventually it will evolve so it can transmit efficiently uh, human to human. We know exactly what has to happen for that to happen. There's four amino acids that need to change. It was published in 2012. I was not an advocate that it would be published because I thought it would show a uh, terrorist a recipe to how to create a catastrophic virus, yeah. but it was published. You, you know, Senator Marshall, I'm a man of faith. I think it's kind of a miracle that no one's exploited that yet to cause global chaos. But I am more concerned that the virus could be created in university labs. Labs are doing experiments that are trying to understand uh, how to manipulate this virus and then be subject to accidental laboratory leak. And once respiratory viruses get leaked, uh, they're very hard to contain. So I'm very concerned about that. On the other side of your question, I think that the United States is not prepared proportional to the threat. As I said, I think this is the greatest national security threat our nation faces. We have a $900 billion Defense Department for the threat of China, North Korea, Iran, um, and, uh, and Russia. Uh, we don't have really any systematic uh, agency or network of private sector uh, contractors to help us with the biosecurity threat, which I believe we should have. We need a proportional uh, response to the threat. Uh, I'd like to see us uh, build within the Department of Energy since they're used to weapons of mass destruction. They have a good science base for them to basically get the mission to help build our biosecurity response and then build a series of private sector enterprises, like you mentioned, antiviral drug development uh, and vaccine diagnostics. Uh, PPE, as well as medical equipment that you can predict we'll need. When COVID happened, you remember Vice President Pence went up to Michigan uh, to the Ford manufacturers to ask them to stop making Fords and start to making ventilators. Yeah, Dr. Redfield, if I could interrupt you. So it's, I want you to really nail this, the, the vaccine versus therapeutics. Uh, therapeutics stop transmission. So if suddenly we found, heaven forbid, that bird flu was in, in humans, we could go in there with a therapeutic and, and stop the really stop the spread. Am I right or yeah, wrong? Yeah, I think your point, Senator, is exactly right. We 
too much weight is on vaccines. They're part of the uh, response, but it's not where the money is. The money is in antiviral drug development. That's where the money is. The way I uh, keep my patients alive today that get COVID that are over the age of 65 is, is, is the antiviral drugs. And our, our, what we really need to have for bird flu because uh, we don't have them right now, is multiple antivirals that are highly efficacious against bird flu, and we don't have it. We and, should and have it. Talk them. about the supply chain, what we don't have in this country, for you to be able to develop those antivirals. There's some chemicals and rare earth stuff that you need that yeah. I don't have. Yeah, there's different technologies, and this is where I think this should invest in platform technologies that can protect us. Uh, right now, for many drugs, you know, you need to get an active pharmaceutical agreement and the, uh, ingredient, and the sources of that is really two, India and China. Right? There's an alternative platform, which I'm a big advocate of, which is to use the mRNA platform, not for vaccines now, but for therapeutics. Okay. And if I do use the mRNA for, for therapeutics, uh, what I need to do is just procure four nucleotides, which I can procure right now. And, right? The, and, the, and then and I can put them we're, in the, we're eliminating the risk of developing the vaccine to be leaked. I mean, yeah, developing we, a vaccine often leads to leaks, it seems Yeah, like. I just think that we should have a robust uh, therapeutic program that builds technology that's independent of needing to go get active pharmaceutical ingredients from China and India. And that technology exists today using the mRNA technology, not for vaccine development, but using it for therapeutic product development. Dr. Esfield, let's talk about national security just one more time here. In, in my humble mind, a viral biosecurity issue is, is, is a bigger issue than China's uh, military threat to us. This is way more important than how many more submarines we build. Those submarines are, are important. Why wouldn't we apply the same type of rules and regulations to anybody that's working with nuclear energy, nuclear physics, uh, nuclear bombs? I, I mean, this is 10 times worse uh, as well. Yeah, Senator, I think you're exactly... I'm sorry, let's get oh, Dr. Esfeld's opinion here. Thank yeah. you, Senator. The answer is that even though there are many benefits to nuclear energy, there's a lot more benefits to biotechnology in many different disciplines. And so carving out the fraction that is dangerous and poses these risks to national security, which is overwhelmingly due to agents that can transmit efficiently. That is the tiniest fraction of all biomedical research. And I believe we dramatically underregulate that and frankly overregulate much of the rest of it. Thank you.